The Challenge of the Yukon. It's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On Husky! Gold! Gold! Discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike and the greedy race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. The long Yukon winter was nearly over. The snow was melting rapidly. And when Randy Clark, the Yukon Trading Company's crack driver, started south with a sled load of gold, he knew he would have to travel night and day to reach the company's headquarters in Whitehorse before the trail became impassable. On the first night out from Dawson, just after he had passed Eagle Rock, a man stepped out on the trail ahead of him. Hi there, mister. Hold up a minute. The cold of the Yukon made it impossible to pass the stranger by. But Randy checked his gun before he called out to the team to stop. Oh, oh there, boy. Hold down. Oh. Howdy, mister. A chance to ride with you to the next week. Eh? Not a chance in the world. Hey, is that a way to treat a traveler? I got as much weight as the dogs can pull in this going. You must weigh nearly 250 pounds. I'll pay you well. Also, it's against the company rules. I just can't do it. Okay, if that's the way you feel about it. I'm sorry, stranger. Another man had detached himself from the shadow of Eagle Rock and had moved silently toward Randy. He was directly behind him as the young driver started to release his brake. And then... Nice work, yeah. <laughs> Time for congratulations will come later, after we have finished this business. It won't take long to get the sled from behind the rock and switch the gold to it. You must be well on your way before this fellow wakes up. <laughs> I will be, don't worry. It was nearly half an hour later when Randy opened his eyes. He was lying on his sled, and the fur robe had been pulled over him. Oh, hey. Hey, what happened? I do not know, my friend. I found you lying beside your sled. You have hit your head. <laughs> it means somebody hit it for me. Oh? And they got the gold. You have been robbed? I'll say I have. $25,000 in dust. You carry so much? I work for the Yukon Trading Company. <laughs> I'm supposed to be able to take care of myself. Of all the stupid numbskulls to fall for a trick like that. A trick? One guy talks to me while the other comes up behind me and knocks me out. I... Uh, never mind. Uh, you will follow these crooks, perhaps. What would be the use? How can you follow a trail in this slush and mud? No, I'll get back to Dawson as fast as I can and report to the police. Uh, uh monsieur, I am going to Dawson. Uh, is it possible for me to travel with you? I don't know why not. I haven't got any cargo now. Sure, climb on board. Oh, merci. It's a good idea. You can be a witness to what happened. Oh, with pleasure. <laughs> uh, my name is Pierre Reynaud. I'm Randy Clark. Get around there, Borneo. Come on, we're heading back to town. All right, march. All right, get around. Right. It was not until late the following afternoon that Randy and the Frenchman reached Dawson. They stopped at the Yukon Trading Company store to pick up Kurt Edgar, the local manager, and then drove on to the Northwest Mounted Police headquarters, where Randy told his story to Sergeant Preston. When he had finished... Oh, uh, I want to check this description of the man who stopped you, Randy. You're sure he was six foot four? Easy. He was at least two inches taller than I. And about 250 pounds. About. Black beard, nose that had been broken. Yeah, and, and a scar along the side of his mouth. I have that. Wearing a black and white parka. That's right, Sergeant. Didn't you see the man who hit you at all? No, Kurt. If you'd only taken a guard along with you, this wouldn't have happened. All right, all right. Why didn't you, Randy? Because I didn't want anybody riding the sled with a trail in the condition it is now. I didn't think I'd make it to White Horse with the extra weight. Probably wouldn't have. Oh, uh, now, Pierre. Uh, oui, Sergeant. You didn't see this man in the black and white parka, did you? Yes, I did. Huh? You did? Yes, Randy. 
Well, why didn't you say something about it before? Where? When? My friend, I have been hoping you would think better of your plan. Huh? That you would decide not to go through with it. Oh, but tell the truth. Why, oh, I, I have told the truth. Just what are you driving at, Pierre? Sato. Yes? Last night I'm coming from the country where I trapped and I hit the Yukon Trail at Eagle Rock. That's what I understood, and you found Randy. Wait. As I near the trail, I could see two men and two sleds. Good. You not only saw the man in the black and white parka, but the one who hit me. You can give the sergeant a description. Do you not realize that it is no use to lie anymore? Lie? There were two men. One big with a beard wearing a black and white parka. The other one was you, Randy. I, I don't get it. If you were there, then why I don't was you... there. I was in the shadow of the rock. But because of what I heard, I did not show myself. What did you hear? Randy was saying to the other man, you have the gold and you know where to take it. We will split later. What are you talking about? You got it all mixed up. Well, I never... Randy. But you don't see... I'm cause... beginning to see a lot of things. Go on and finish, Pierre. Well, Randy said, it must look like I put up a fight here. You must hit me with the butt of your revolver. That's a lie. Why are you dirty little lie? I demand your protection if I am to continue. Take it easy, Randy. It's crazy. I want to hear the end of this. What happened then, Pierre? Well, uh, the big man hit Randy, and Randy fell down. And the big one drove off with the gold. In which direction? Uh, to the south. Uh, I give up. Well, whether Randy is really knocked out, I do not know. But I stayed there. And it is a little while before he opened his eyes. <laughs> And then he told me a fine story about two men beating him up. And you pretended to believe him? Kurt, you're not swallowing this story, are you? I haven't decided. In answer to your question, I pretended to believe. I asked for a ride to Dawson. I thought, Pierre, yeah, you had better keep an eye on this fellow. But Randy, I do not believe you are a bad boy. Oh, this is a mistake only. Perhaps if you tell Monsieur Edgar where his gold is, he will forgive you. Why, you dirty little rat. I'm a rat because I tell the truth. Every word of it's a lie. What are you doing, trying to send me to jail? I am hoping you will not have to go there. You don't have to, Randy. What? You can have your chance. Tell me where the gold is. Tell the sergeant where your partner is, and the company won't press charges. I don't know where the gold is. I haven't got any partner. That's a fine thing to talk about, pressing charges. I've been driving for the company ever since it opened up here. And if you don't believe me, instead of this half-baked Frenchman... It's because of your record that I am prepared to be lenient, Randy. But, Kurt, don't you... You can make up your mind. Take it or leave it. I don't know where the gold is. you better change your mind about that. How can I? All right. If that's your last word, arrest him, Sergeant. You're sure you want to charge him with robbery on the basis of Pierre's testimony? Randy gives me no choice. You can't arrest him. I have to. Kurt insists on it. But it will be a jury that decides whether you're guilty or not. I'm only doing my duty... And, Sergeant, I'm insisting that you do yours. You'll have to swear out a warrant. I will. Then what happens? I'm sorry, Randy. Then you go to jail. And it was into the jail that Sergeant Preston brought Karen Edgar to see Randy that evening. Karen, young, beautiful, very much in love with Randy, was Kurt Edgar's niece. Her eyes were troubled, but she managed to smile at Randy when she and the sergeant reached his cell. Miss Darling, I had to come and tell you that I don't believe a word of it. Thanks, Karen. And I don't understand why Kurt should take that Frenchman's word in preference to yours. I'm beginning to understand. You are? Yes. But I don't want to say anything about it. Why, Randy? What reason could there be? You won't like my reason. Well, I want to hear it anyway. You know as well as I do that Kurt's in debt. I know that he's lost money, but he's paid off his debt. He has? Yes. I, I wonder how. His salary isn't very large. You're not suggesting that... Oh, Kurt... I, I don't know what I'm suggesting. I'm not suggesting anything. I, I'm just innocent, and that's all there is to it. But when it comes to a jury... They can't well, convict him, can they, Sergeant? Oh, no, let's hope not, Karen. Well, when will his trial come up? Not for a week. The judge is in 40 miles. In the meantime, I'm going to try and find that man, the black and white parker, and the gold. Do you think there's any chance, I... Oh, of course, Randy. If anyone saw him, they'd remember him. King and I will start out first thing in the morning. Oh, please, Sergeant, please find him. All I can promise is we'll do our best. There's more than a chance. You see, uh, a week's a long time. The man in the black and white parker was much nearer than any of the three imagined. His name was Brad Peters, 
He was sitting in the office of the Yukon Trading Company's store with Kurt Edgar and Pierre Renault. And it was straight to the store that Karen walked when she left the jail. The door was locked, but she had a key. The store was dark, but she could see a light in her uncle's office. She had decided to plead with Kurt once more to withdraw his charges against Randy. She tried the door of the office, found it locked. She was about to knock when she realized there was an argument going on inside. Why are you so nervous, Brad? Because I want my share of the gold, I want to get out of here. I'll give Kurt a chance to make sure it's all there. Why shouldn't it be all there? If I was going to keep any, I'd have kept it all. You would have found that unwise. I want to get out of here. You will head straight for the border, I suppose. As fast as I can get there. Let me tell you, that is impossible. Why? You've accused young Clark of the robbery, and he's in jail. You'll stay there until the trial comes up. Oh, very true. But you're forgetting. Sergeant has your description. There is nothing we can do about that. Randy saw you, even if he didn't see me. And the police will be looking for you. You must lie low for a few days. We will find some way to get you out of the country. But you must give us time. Where can I hide out? I have the place. Yeah, the gold's all here. Good. Now we can get down into business. 25000 Now, 10000 goes back in the company safe to make up what I'm short. We split the other 15000 three ways. Here's your share, Bad. Now, wait a minute. What for? I've decided you're being unfair, Kurt. What do you mean? That was our agreement. <laughs> but no matter how I reason it, it seems to me that you're getting three times as much as either Brad or me. Well, I'm getting the same. Fifteen thousand and five thousand. <laughs> three times as much. Well, you know I'm short. You know I've got to make it up. But why out of our pockets? Your own business if you stole money from the company. Your own business if you want to put it back. I, uh, am prepared to be generous, Kurt, because you planned this thing. You may pay your debt in full. You may have ten thousand. The rest goes to bad and me. Not on your life. <laughs> it is fair, is it not, Brad? Sure. Pierre's right, Kurt. <laughs> and may I remind you that we are two against one. Oh, no, you're not. It. You see that gun? It evens the odds. You're a smooth talker, Pierre, but you made an agreement and you're going to stick to it. Your share is 5000 Um, do I understand you correctly? You would shoot me if I disagreed? You got it right. You can have 5000 or nothing. <laughs> well, in that case, I will accept the 5000 You satisfied, Brad? Hey, what's that? Why? heard something out in this door. There's nobody out there. I heard a noise. All right, that's a rat. I'm going to make sure about that. Didn't sound like rats to me. Karen had heard enough. She had started for the front door, but she'd stumbled across a packing case and fallen to the floor. And now, as Brad threw open the door of the office, he saw her scrambling to her feet. It's the girl. She's heading for the front door. No, no you don't. The, the, the black and white park. What? Let go of me. You're not getting out of here. Who is it, Kurt? It's my niece. Oh, Uncle Kurt. Take her into my office. Hey, come on. How did she get in? He works here. She has a key. But she heard us talking. Oh, maybe not. I heard enough. You little fool. A little fool? <laughs> but no, Kurt. A little beauty. Shut the door. Sit down, Karen. All that gold on your desk. That's what was stolen from Randy by that man and Pierre. And you were the one who planned it, Uncle Kurt. How could you? Well, I had to. I owed Tex Clark $10,000. And I had to pay him if I wanted to stay healthy. I took the money from the company's funds and it had to be put back. By stealing? No one will ever know that. Oh, yes, they will. You can't get away with it. Karen, you wouldn't go to the police with what you know, would you? The first chance I get, Kurt. I love Randy. We're going to be married. Do you think I'll let you send him to jail? That settles it. And you. Sergeant Preston has your description. And he's going out after you. You won't get away, that's for sure. Oh, you two gave him my description. Randy gave it to him. I'm getting out of here. Won't do you any good. You'd better make sure this girl doesn't talk, Kurt. I intend to. You wouldn't I'll do anything. I have to protect myself. Now, wait. Let me suggest that drastic measures are not necessary yet. I prefer not to be mixed up in them. Let's keep our heads and think calmly. It's only necessary to prevent the girl from interfering with our plans. Well... Well, it's a better idea for Brad to hide out for a while than to try to get out of the country. Well, where can I do that? You don't expect me to stay in Dawson. No. I have a cabin on the other side of the Yukon, 
It's hidden in the hills directly across from here. It's the perfect place. Dangerous to cross the Yukon now. The ice is rotten. We're almost ready for the breakup. There's an ice jam below town that stretches from shore to shore. It is very solid, like a bridge. You can cross that in perfect safety. Uh, okay. Tell me where the cabin is. Draw me some kind of a map. I'm doing that right now. But um, you will not go there alone, Brad. Well, if you're coming to... <laughs> I did not say that. You will take the girl with you. Oh, no! It is all right with you, Kurt. It's fine with me. And uh, you, Brad? <laughs> she is very pretty. <laughs> yeah. I won't go with you. You can't stop me That's to. That's where you're wrong, sister. You'll do just what I say and like it. I'm not as squeamish as these other two. Uh, here's the map. And I want my gold. Here you are. Good. It's well that you get started at once. I am. I won't go with you. No. Oh, my arm. Behave yourself. Yeah. And don't open your mouth when we get outside or I'll shut you up with this gun. Come on. We will uh, keep in touch with you. Say that you do. Why do you look so worried, Kurt? That doesn't settle anything. For the time being. If she ever gets free, she'll go straight to the police. Of course. Why not get rid of her right now? Why not get rid of several people right now? Huh? The Northwest Mounted Police always get their men. And Brad is not smart enough to evade Sergeant Preston for long. If he's caught, it'll be too bad for him. I know that. Then why not get rid of him, too? And Sergeant Preston. Preston? All three will die. It will seem to be an accident. Let me tell you my idea, Kurt. It is so simple. And there will be no risk. In Sergeant Preston's cabin, King was watching his master pack his saddlebag. He knew this meant the sergeant would soon be hitting the trail, and it also meant that he would not be using the dog team. The great dog whimpered his concern. Yes, King, I'll be riding this trail. <laughs> that doesn't mean you'll be left behind. You can come along, fella. Come in. Sergeant. Oh, hello, Kurt. Pierre and I just saw the man in the black and white park. Huh? It, it is true. You mean here in town? Just below town, where the ice is all jammed up across the river. He was crossing over to the other bank. I'll go after him. Karen's with him. What? There was a girl with him, and I'm sure it was Karen. Naturally, she wouldn't have gone with him willingly, but I can only guess what might have happened. She knew we were looking for this man. If she saw him, recognized him, tried to stop him, well, I don't know what. I was going after them myself, but Pierre wanted me to come here. Oh, that man in the black and white park is dangerous. Oh, I'm sorry, I... But no part of trying to capture him. That's my job. You can trail him, can't you, King? Yes, boy. Come on, let's go. Sergeant Preston and King hurried through the town and down to the river, where the large ice floes piled one on top of the other formed a natural bridge from one side of the Yukon to the other. They ran across it. On the far side, the sergeant found the fresh tracks left by the man and girl in the melting snow. There they are, King. Moon's bright. We won't have any trouble following them. The trail led into the low hills west of the river. And half an hour later, they saw a lamp shining through the window of a small log cabin. The tracks led directly to the door, and the sergeant did not hesitate. Quiet now, boy. They want to take him by surprise. Now. Hold your hands. What the... Sergeant I'll show you. Oh! Last shooting. Too bad for you, it wasn't straight. Oh, my arm. He didn't hit your thoughts. No, he didn't. Oh, thank goodness. Well, this fellow certainly fits Randy's description. He's the man who stopped him, all right. His name is Brad Peters. You're under arrest, Peters. Does he have the gold here? Only his share. Oh, Sergeant, how did you get here? Your uncle saw the two of you crossing the ice and reported it to headquarters. My... my uncle? Boy, that dirty double-crosser. What's that? Well, I'll have to tell you, Sergeant. Uncle Kurt's just as guilty as this man is. Brad and Pierre were the two who committed the robbery. Pierre, eh? But it was Kurt who planned the whole thing. The rest of the gold is in his office. How do you know that? I saw it. And I heard them talking. They caught me listening. And then Pierre and Kurt persuaded them to take me over here and hold me prisoner. Karen... Are you willing to testify against your uncle? Yes, I am. After the way he's treated me and Randy, I don't owe him any loyalty. Even if he did. Oh, well, the fact that he sent you after me may mean that he's had a change of heart. I doubt but... that, Karen. It wasn't for your sake he sent me after you. He wanted to get rid of me. He hoped you'd kill me. There may be even more to it than that. We'll find out soon enough. Sit down, I'll bandage your arm, Peters. Yeah. And we'll start back to the other side of the river. 
As soon as the arm was bandaged, Karen, the sergeant, and his prisoner headed through the hills once more toward the river. Meanwhile, Kurt and Pierre were preparing to carry out the Frenchman's plan. As soon as the Mountie left headquarters, they had gone to the store, picked up blasting powder and a coil of fuse. Their next stop was the middle of the ice bridge spanning the Yukon. They set the charge, connected the fuse, and brought the end of it back to the Dawson side of the river. Then, behind the cover of some rocks, they waited. How long has he been gone? Two hours. Hmm. It is possible that Brad will give him plenty of trouble. Brad's no match for the bounty. But if he doesn't bring him back before dawn, this idea may not work. And why not? Somebody might come out from town and see us here. Oh, there's still plenty of time. We will be the only witnesses. We will go back to headquarters and report how they were caught in the breakup and swept away down the street. It's fine as long as they start crossing before dawn. Mm. I only wish that I... You have your wish. Look, look, the other bank. Where? Where I'm pointing. It's the three of them starting across. Light the fuse. Uh, it burns fast. They're far enough from shore. Not yet. That's Brad in front, isn't it? We. Now he's behind helping the girl. Brad's been hurt. He's got his arm in a sling. If he only like that fuse, it will not bother him for long. Okay. There's no chance of their getting back now. As the fuse burned toward the charge of blasting powder, Brad, Karen, and the sergeant with King at his master's heels were nearing the middle of the river. Keep to the left, Brad. There's open water on the downstream side. You want me to fall in? You'll find the going easier. Yeah, I'll pick my own trail. All right, Karen. Yes. <laughs> King saw the spluttering light of the fuse traveling toward them across the top of the ice bridge. He marked his concern, and the sergeant looked ahead. Fred, that's a fact. Hey, what's the matter now? That's fire on the ice. It looks like it must be a fuse. A fuse? It must be. Now I'm beginning to understand. Kurt and Pierre have set a trap, and we've walked right into it. What do you mean? They've set a charge of dynamite ahead of us. They're going to blow up the ice dam. That's a fuse. It's gone out. It has not. It's reached the charge. Get down! <laughs> moment the fuse reached the blasting powder. The middle of the ice jam was lifted high in the air, and then the whole bridge began to break up. The huge piece of ice the sergeant and Karen were crossing started to slide free of the jam into the water. Oh, sergeant! Keep down. Don't try to stand up. But we're going into the water. All right. This ice flows as good as a raft. It'll hold us. Where's Frank? No, he went out of there. There he is, holding on to the edge. Help! I'll give him a hand. Help me! Help! I've got you! Sergeant pulled Brad out of the water and wrapped his own parka around him. The ice flow started moving downstream along with many others from shore to shore. Sergeant, you're right. This ice is as good as any raft. Of course. Couldn't we jump from floor to floor and make it to the bank? Well, you and I could make it. I don't know about Brad. I, I'm all right now. Just cold. I, I'd rather get going than freeze to death. Good idea. Won't be long before there'll be a lot of open water between the flows. Let's go, Brad. <sighs> The ice floes, free of the jam, were still so close together that they formed a floating bridge to the shore. Brad started toward it, followed by Karen and the sergeant, and King brought up the rear. On the bank, Kurt and Pierre watched them. Look at that. I can see. They'll get here. When they do, the sergeant will arrest us. By now, Karen's told them all about you and me. We must stop them from getting here. How? You have a rifle? Use it. And go to jail for murder? With all this noise, who will hear a shot? If they drown, it will never be found out they've been murdered. I'll quickly shoot. Shoot for the Mountie first. I can't get a beat on him from here. I'll have to move downstream. I'll do it in fast. Come on. King saw the men on the bank first. What is it, King? The from the Mountie asked the question. He saw a flash of fire. Fred, Karen, get down. They're shooting at us from the bank. Shooting? Get down, Karen. Kurt and Pierre, the skunks, they, they don't want us to get to shore. Well, they thought they'd blow us into the water, and that didn't work. Well, they're using a rifle. But what can we do, Sergeant? Keep down. Well, how long? In a few minutes, we won't be able to make it from one ice floe to another. King, King, boy. <laughs> Go and get those men. Understand, boy? What can King do, Sergeant? He can keep them so busy, Karen, they won't have time to shoot at us. Go on, boy. King was off and away toward the shore. In the moonlight, his silvery coat blended with the ice, and Kurt and Pierre never saw him. From one ice floe to another, he leaped, and soon he was scrambling up the bank downstream from Kurt and Pierre. Silently, swiftly, he moved toward them. It was the man with the gun he must get. He crouched on the bank above him. Then as the man raised the gun to his shoulder once more, he leaped. Hey, Pierre! 
Kurt was kneeling in the porch of King's charge, knocked him to the ground. But he still held on to the rifle, and at once King was worrying the hand that held it. Help! Get this dog off me! Throw the gun to me! I can't! Come and get it! You were coming on me! Beat him over the head! Pierre picked up a large rock and tried to get close enough to bring it down on King's head. A snarl, and he retreated, but now he saw a chance to grab the rifle. Just got hold of your wrist, sir. Let go of the gun. Call away from it. Go on, just a little more. Quickly, Pierre reached for the rifle. But before he could raise it to his shoulder, King recognized the new danger and hurled himself at the Frenchman. Desperately, Pierre tried to beat off the attack using the rifle as a club. King was too fast for him. Soon he was unable to do more than protect himself from King's charges. Kirk was shouting, Run! They got the shore! Here comes the mob! I can't run! You dirty crap! Get off me! I'm getting out of here! No, you not, Kirk. Make a move and I'll shoot the kill! No! I got my hands up! Call his dog off! Stop that rifle! I call him off and I will! All right, King. All right, boy. Easy now. I've got him covered. I'll take that rifle, Pierre. You and Kurt are under arrest in the name of the Queen. For attempted murder, you poor cat. I'm going to do all I can to send you to jail for the rest of your life. You'll get a chance to give evidence for the Crown, Brad. And it might lighten your own sentence a little. But right now, all of you are going to jail. Move along. Come on, Karen. Watch him, King. Watch him, boy. An hour later, Randy had been freed... He found Karen waiting for him in the sergeant's office. Darling. Oh, Randy. You're all right. I'm fine. Don't feel too badly about Kurt. No, I don't. Somehow he seems like a stranger. I never knew the man who could do the things he's done tonight. Oh, hold me close, Randy. Oh, I sure will. There's only you and I now. <laughs> That's plenty good enough for me. Oh, uh... I beg your pardon. Well, it looks to me, King, that the case is closed. of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature, is a George W. Trendle production brought to you each week at this time. All names and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next week to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. Larry McCann speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. Here's Burt Park of ABC's Stop the Music. Maybe he'll let us in on the title of the famous mystery melody. Well, maybe he'll at least sing it for us. Well, that I can't do, Doug, but I'll tell you what. You don't have to be a big tycoon to identify that mystery tune. All you need is a memory. Stop the music. It's very easy. Sounds easy anyhow, doesn't it? So now's the time for every family to listen for the mystery melody. For Sunday evening may bring wealth to you. Stop the music. It's fun to do. So Sunday night, wait for your phone to ring. Prizes you may win are most astonishing. A favor right throughout the nation. Stop the music on this ABC station. And who knows, we might call you. Stop the music will be heard Sunday evening over this same ABC station. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.